turn stuff off. Hello. Listening. How are you? Good. How about you? I'm good too. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Um, today we'll be discussing about Kubernetes and, of course, Mustafa's experience and his knowledge. Um, but before we start uh, with our discussion, I just want everyone to know that you can ask your questions from the question and answers part. Uh, and we'll try to answer all of those at the end. Um, I will be forwarding those questions to Mustafa. And let's start with a brief introduction about Mustafa and his experience in the field of Kubernetes and DevOps, of course. Okay. I, uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, I've been working in the IT industry more than 10 years um, and with uh, focus on to DevOps practices and Kubernetes. And I have involved different projects uh, where I uh, like uh, create the clusters and manage the Kubernetes and deploy the our application. Um, and I have also CKAD and CKA and certification. Those are is um, uh, about the Kubernetes. And I am working at the Fidelity Life uh, Insurance Company uh, as a DevOps engineer, and sometimes and I do teach at the uh, uh, Claros Way about the DevOps courses and also CK the uh, certification course. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so shall we start with our questions? Sure. Okay, for those who might be new to Kubernetes, can you explain what it is and why it, it has become such a fundamental technology in the world of DevOps? Okay, yeah. Um, of course, and many of, and if the people are in, into IT industry, probably they heard the Kubernetes and um, so I would say it, it started with the Google and then it's given to Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation and it became to open source. So that means then you can, any company can they use it. Um, and also um, many of the cloud provider, they are offering the Kubernetes uh, on the managed Kubernetes, which is like uh, Amazon is offering EKS like Elastic Kubernetes services, or Azure is offering AKS, and Google is offering different than GKE. Um, so uh, it's become more popular since then. You don't need to manage uh, some of the stuff. Um, uh, if you want to understand the Kubernetes, um, so I would say it is a. Um, when I look at the CN, CF and definition onto Kubernetes, it says like a container orchestration platform. So which means, um, and you are able to orchestrate um, your containerized application. So you can deploy it, you can do the scaling, you can do the um, any of the scalability, reliability or automation. So then um, you can do those stuff. Uh, easily. Um, so, but before the, the Kubernetes, you, you, we, we need to understand to what is the container, right? So, because we are seeing is the Kubernetes is the container orchestration tool. So, which means you have to have the containers first, and you have to make your application to containerize the application. So then, uh, and the Kubernetes is um, able to manage those containers. So we are not talking about only one container. We are talking about, and if the company is really big, so uh, for example, Netflix is using the Kubernetes and they have like a thousand containers. So, and if it's the only one or two containers, so it may be easy to manage it, but if you are talking about like a thousand or um, 10,000 containers, so it's not very easy to manage them. So that's the reason uh, Kubernetes become really popular. Um, the container is just, if I want to mention a few words, um, is kind of the portable, um, uh, lightweight, and then consistent environment that you are uh, putting your application inside of that. Um, so, um, and then the Kubernetes is also provides a 
uh, framework or automation to your deployment. And then you can easily scale your deploy uh, application. And also um, it's offering some different um, reliability, like a security or networking uh, option too. So those are is the, right. uh, the basic uh, uh, explanation. So I, I could say about the Kubernetes. Okay, thank you. Because uh, probably just like most of us who is watching this event right now, uh, we're trying to learn about Kubernetes because I don't know much about it. So I'd like to ask a little bit more. Uh, what are some key concepts or components of Kubernetes that developers and DevOps engineers should be familiar with? Yeah, um, it's just coming to my mind. So some of the key concept is, I would say, is the parts. Uh, part is the uh, smallest component of the Kubernetes. Uh, so I would say nodes, and like uh, you are putting your um, application uh, into infrastructure, uh, deployment services, ingress, config map, secrets, network policy, RBACs, and there are lots of different component. It doesn't mean you have to know everything and uh, depending on to your application, so, and then, but is the Kubernetes is offering uh, lots of um, elements so then you can use it. So then it's always improving. So when it started maybe uh, with the, uh, maybe 10 elements, but, and right now is the, it is more than 30 elements. So you can use it as a, uh, those concept onto Kubernetes. Um, let's talk about the challenges a little bit. So while Kubernetes is powerful, it also comes with its challenges, of course, like everything else. What are some common challenges you've faced and how did you overcome them? Yes. Yeah, um, even in my new company, so um, we started talking about like, how should we use the Kubernetes or different um you know, and, and there is not only the Kubernetes is the uh, the container orchestration. There are some um, other um, tools that you can use it, uh, like a Docker Swarm, or um, uh, you can use the Mesos or different um, company. They are offering also different um, uh, orchestration tool, um, <clears throat> and also uh, some of the cloud provider they are offering managed Kubernetes services. Like a, a, in AWS, it's called the ECS um, because it, it's not very easy to, to manage the Kubernetes. Um, but when you create a really strong cluster and if you really set it up um, and each of the component and then and doing the deployment or managing the, 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 the container, it's, it's become easy. But the hardest part is the creating your cluster robust uh, and trying to secure your environment. Those are the, the challenges, I would say. Um, another challenge is the, uh, the, the storage because it doesn't come with the out of box into uh, Kubernetes. You have to manage it, uh, your own um, storage. And, and you can use the many different storage option um, and then you can use it in, inside of the, your cluster, but um, it doesn't come with the Kubernetes. So you have to manage it by yourself. Uh, and other things about um, uh, the most challenging is the security part, uh, because if you are working in the company, let's say your company is working as a like a banking or um, some uh, sensitive data. So you have to make sure the those compilers and uh, make sure that is no data is uh, uh, goes outside of the, your cluster. No one should able to get into your um, system. Um, so it's become more um, problematic. And then also, uh, so you have to put some uh, other um, tools to use it with the Kubernetes, like uh, it's called the service mesh. So you can um, 
manage your networking inside of your Kubernetes. Um, you have to install it on top of the Kubernetes, like uh, Istio or Kong, there are some different service mesh. So then you can uh, control and monitor your networking. Uh, so those are is the most challenging parts. Like uh, one is the storage, uh, second is the networking uh, and securing your cluster. And third is then uh, creating a uh, robust cluster, I would say. So we spent like uh, in my Thank previous you. company uh, three months to just uh, uh, create our cluster to make sure that is it, it's secure because it was working with uh, some sensitive data. Okay, it's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to scare them, about... but yeah. I don't want to skip them, <laughs> but is uh, those are is the challenges. But uh, again, so as uh, not just one person can deal it, so it's like uh, the whole company and policies and stuff. I think it's good to know beforehand. So thank you for sharing your experience about it. Um, what are the best practices uh, for deploying and managing the applications of Kubernetes? Yeah. Uh, the one of the the essential things like um deploying um your application onto kubernetes is that you have to use the uh it's called um i a, a c a like an um, infrastructure as a code principle which means like you need to uh, use the declarative way uh, to create your configuration so which means as you have to uh, create a YAML format uh, configuration file. Um, so that those are is then you will put it into uh, somewhere into any like Bitbucket, GitHub or any other um, places. Uh, so that way is the when you need to do uh, the second deployment, third deployment or others, or, or you sometimes you need to roll back into a um, previous um, application. Uh, so that way is, um, it will be uh, more visible and and also let's say and you are not working that day um, so someone else uh, can uh, read your code also same thing so uh, you have to really implement the uh, declarative way to uh, create those configuration and also uh, there are some tools uh, helping into the deployment and it's called the helm uh, it is like a package um, um, application package management for the uh, Kubernetes. So it's really helpful. Uh, so then uh, you don't need to worry about which um, uh, configuration I didn't deploy it and which one comes first and which one and should go next, uh, how they are interacting each other. So, um, and definitely the Helm is really biggest help. Um, when we come into the deployment to your application. Okay, thank you. Uh, how about the security? So how can organizations mm -hmm. ensure the security of their Kubernetes clusters and containerized applications? Yes. Um, and also Kubernetes, uh, like in any company, uh, so they have like kind of uh, two different jobs. One is the administering, uh, administrating to do your Kubernetes cluster. Second is uh, to deployment or creating your application and uh, onto Kubernetes. So that's the reason like uh, there are two certification um, uh, exam. So and one is the Kubernetes administrator. The other one is the Kubernetes um, uh, developer part. Um, so, and this uh, security part is, uh, it is, um, related to administrating part because uh, when you create your cluster, you need to give the people the access to your cluster and then, and do the deployment or do the changes. So you have to create a, a definitely the RBAC and we call it, it is the role-based access control. So that way is, uh, um, uh, when you give the access to people and they should able to only do some certain stuff. So for example, is um, some of the developer, they shouldn't able to go into certain parts and which you may have some sensitive data or database. So, and how you can control and you, you can control with the, uh, the rollback access control, or you can use the 
some of the network policies, definitely. Um, and then you have to do the regular updates um, on your nodes and also, and you have to update your uh, cluster uh, because it's releasing a new version. So then uh, if they have any issues, so they are fixing it. So then you, you need to do the, those updates. Uh, another thing is uh, it's become popular is the container image um, uh, security. You have to scan your container. Uh, sometimes you are using like a public container. Uh, there are lots of um, the container apps. Um, uh, so then you need to scan them to make sure that there is no uh, security issues. And also you can, the last thing is you can implement the path security policies um, to make sure that uh, who can able to reach those uh, container or pods. And uh, so you can do those kind of uh, management uh, network policy you can establish in the company or in the cluster. Okay. All right. How do you approach observability and monitoring in Kubernetes environments? Yes. Um, and for monitoring, and definitely you should do that. Um, and there are some tools that um, it works with the Kubernetes and it's called the Prometheus. So those are is the, the um, as, um, taking the metrics from your um, uh, cluster. Um, and then you can um, do those, um, uh, the metrics, and then you can put work with the Grafana. There is another tool. Uh, so it can visualize it. So then you can look at and how many, how much is CPU usage in your cluster and how much storage you have. And uh, you have to check your memories and you have to check your resources. Uh, those kind of things is you can monitor with the, uh, the Prometheus and Grafana. And of course, and this is not only one tool. So some people are using and, and different tools. And especially if they establish like a service mesh, uh, so you can um, check with the uh, different tool like Istio or Kong, so then you can monitor your networking, uh, who log into your um, the cluster. So uh, is there an attack to your cluster? So is there any uh, breach in, in your cluster? And those kind of things is you can and definitely check it and, and monitor it. Right. Thank you. Shall we move on to the ecosystem? So could you share your insights into the broader Kubernetes ecosystem and any specific tools or projects that you find particularly valuable? Yeah, uh, there are lots. I mean, the, it's, the ecosystem is really um, um, broad and then vast, so I, I, I would say. Um, and I, I, I as I mentioned in, in the deployment part, so the Helm is really helpful. Uh, one of the the, the, the management, uh, the package management tool for Kubernetes. So I would definitely um, uh, tell people, and if you are learning Kubernetes, you should also learn the Helm and how to use it. Um, another is, uh, and I would say either Istio or Kong. So those are the service mesh, and especially if if your company um, is really important uh, about the security, securing your data. So you should definitely uh, look at that one too. Um, so those are is coming to my mind. So, but another tool is it's called the Rancher, um, and if you are doing like a uh, different cloud providers. So, and let's say, and then one of your application, in, in, you put it into AWS and one of your application into Azure. So you can um, the manage your cluster and using the rancher. So if you uh, establish into different cloud providers. So those are, is that it's just coming to my mind. Thank you. Uh, a CKD certification. So for those who may not be familiar, what is the Certified Kubernetes Application Developer, CKAD certification? And why is it relevant for DevOps professionals? Okay. Yes, uh, the CKAD certification, and, and if I 
say like a certified Kubernetes application developer. And as I mentioned before, and there's like a two different job into Kubernetes. One is the administrating, second is the developing and uh, your application. Uh, so they separate it um, as um, they have different questions and different uh, curriculum. Um, but the CKAD certification is not like a, uh, all other uh, exam, like a AWS exam. It's not like um, just um, asking questions um, uh, or information about um, how you approach it into Kubernetes. It is a hands-on exam. So which really I really like it because they are they want to test you and if you really uh, know the knowledge and then and and you need to apply your knowledge into the um, and that uh, field. So it's a hands-on um, exam. So and um, they are giving you the scenario. So you need to just apply your knowledge and then uh, you will solve the problem into the uh, actual um, Kubernetes cluster. Okay. And so why is so important? Like... Uh, yeah, why is important? Because um, nowadays, so if they want you to hire you, so they, um, I mean, asking questions sometimes is not enough. They want you to know, like, and if you are able to apply your knowledge into the real scenario. So uh, definitely this exam will show the, the company they should hire you because then you, you have the knowledge and also you are able to apply your knowledge into those hands-on activities, uh, hands-on exam. Good to know, thank you. Um, what about the benefits other than the companies seeing uh, with the hands-on projects? Uh, what are the benefits of obtaining the certification, both for individual pro professionals and organizations? Yes. Uh, so for individual, as uh, um, as I mentioned in the previous conversation, um, is demonstrating and your knowledge and your ability to solve the problem onto Kubernetes uh, in a practical way because um, it's not like a other exam. So as I said, is the hands-on uh, exam. Uh, so it's definitely uh, show your expertise uh, and also it's going to attract and the company to hire you. Uh, because uh, right now is the Kubernetes is kind of the trend and many companies trying to uh, switch to the uh, using this uh, tool. Uh, so, but um, the lack of the expertise and then people, and they are sometimes hesitated. And then that's the reason if they want to hire the new people, they want uh, them to know that this new technology, right? So, and this um, certification is definitely... Uh, it's going to give you um, um, the power to when you apply the new job or when you want to advance to your career. Um, another thing is that um, so when you are trying to uh, get this certification, you need to study. So while you are studying, you are learning uh, not just the concept, you need to apply it and then practice it. So it will um, and you will more understand it. Um, otherwise it's just a conceptual is like, um, but you, you know something, but you don't know how to use it. Uh, but this exam uh, will give you power and you know, the, um, uh, the concept also, you know, how to apply it. So it's really good benefit for you. Um, and again, so, and definitely it's going to attract and the company to hire you. Okay, right, thank you. So right now we see that it's very important. I'm gonna ask you a little bit about, about tips. So could you provide an overview of the CKAD exam format and the key topics that candidates should focus on? And what advice would you give to individuals preparing for this exam? Are there any specific resources or strategies that you find helpful? Yes. Uh, the the first thing is they need to manage the time management uh, because um, the most of the, the people they are failing in this exam is the, they are not able to manage the time. 
because sometimes when you get into one of the questions so and you try to solve it solve it and and you realize and you don't have time to uh to finish the other questions so you should definitely um and learn about uh, the time management. Uh, second is again, so this is a practical exam, so you should definitely practice before the exam. And there are some um, tools and uh, online, uh, uh, like a killer Quora and different stuff. Uh, so you should practice it and some of the, the sample questions uh, before entering the exam. Uh, and third thing is you should definitely uh, read about the curriculum what they are asking and what uh, subject and, and you should learn it because it's changing uh, and also um, they are releasing like a, a different uh, kubernetes um, uh, the version so you have to make sure that it, which version you should study otherwise then some of the components should be different and then you may uh, fail in the exam um, and other um, the main thing is then uh, start with the uh, small stuff like uh, learning um, the pod and learning those stuff first and concept. And then after that is the try to apply your knowledge into those problems. So I would say those are is like uh, just a simple stuff. But uh, if you are planning to take the CKD exam, so uh, we are offering as a class way. Um, so we will go and each of the tips and uh, and in in the class time, uh, and also we will do lots of practice and before the exam, so you will get ready. Okay, thank you. Um, so how do the skills acquired through this exam, the certification, the CKAD uh, certification, integrate with broader DevOps practices? And how can they contribute to a more streamlined development pipeline? Yeah, uh, CKAD is definitely uh, those skills is aligned with the DevOps uh, principle uh, because it's um, uh, we as a DevOps engineer, so we want to do the automation and we want to do the collaboration with the dev and, and operation part. And then also we want to do the efficiency. We want to do like, um, uh, better security, better scalability, and and definitely improve the uh, collaboration between dev and uh, operation side. So and and those skills is uh, in exist into this um, the exam. Um, so it's really it's going to help you those uh, skills and um, the mindset in in this exam. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about tips for beginners then. Uh, for those who are just starting with Kubernetes and have no idea, just like me, yeah. what advice or tips would you give them? Yeah, um, the Kubernetes is, is really um, uh, the complex and then it's, uh, it's become more and more uh, important. So I would say it's start with the basics. And uh, definitely understand the core concept, like what is pod, what is node, and why are we using Kubernetes? Uh, what uh, problem is solving for us? Uh, what are the containers? And definitely you should um, study before the Kubernetes, what is the container? What is the container technology, like a Docker and other um, container technology is out there. And uh, after you understand it, and then the Kubernetes become more easy to grasp the, the concept. Uh, so, and then, then you can explore the, the more advanced future, like um, what is services, what is deployment, what is um, ingress, and what is uh, network policy. So don't start with the, like a really the hard part, and then start with the small and basic uh, stuff, and then then and you can build it later on in each of the concept. Uh, so again, and and I would also suggest and definitely and take those exams CKAD and CKA. Uh, so because sometimes then you want to study something, but um, if you don't put your goal, um, so it's not gonna force you to. And as I like, um, 
even if and and I I've been in the, this industry like more than ten years. So each year, and I'm putting one goal. Like this year, it was my um, getting the certified on the AWS um, DevOps engineer professional. So when you put that goal, and it will force you to study, right? And it will, and and you will more and uh, try to understand the concept, and then, and especially this exam, and then you are also gonna practice it um, and apply your knowledge into the, the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So it's really gonna help you. And also putting those um, certification on your resume, and it's gonna attract and and uh, the company to hire you. So I will I will definitely um, tell people, and they should um, uh, get those two certification. Thank you, and thank you for all of the tips. So, uh, my last thing to ask you is about the future. So our future is important. What do you see as the future trends or developments in the world of Kubernetes and container orchestration? Yeah, uh, the Kubernetes ecosystem is evolving and really rapidly. Um, so I remember like um, uh, what version we were using and right now is the what version they are on right now. So and each month is, or maybe in two months, so they are releasing new version and new uh, edition component into Kubernetes. Um, and then I would expect an uh, improvement in areas like uh, uh, they are trying to do security, uh, multi-cluster management, because then people are using into their um, resources in different um, uh, cloud provider, uh, it's called the hybrid uh, environment. Um, and also they are trying to do the uh, help onto the storage part. Um, but overall, uh, the future of Kubernetes and container orchestration will likely um, the focus on making the platform more um, user-friendly. Uh, it was complex before. Right now, it's, it's becoming more uh, manageable uh, and secure and adaptable to diverse deployment scenarios and people have different uh, scenarios. And as well as integrating with emerging technologies such as AI and, and machine learning. Uh, those are is, is coming into also uh, into Kubernetes world. Um, and also, and again, so each year, so and and using uh, Kubernetes is increasing, and uh, so they are expecting like a seventy percent of the company, um, they will be using Kubernetes by two thousand twenty five. So, so that means is like a, if you are not even um, if you are even working right now, so uh, you need to uh, somehow uh, learn the Kubernetes. It will come to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mustafa. Um, so those were all of my questions. Um, I could answer the other questions our uh, watchers are going to ask right now. Um, before we end the event, our talk, um, would you like to add anything else? Uh, yes, and we have an uh, upcoming uh, CKAD uh, uh, certification course on the Cloudsway. And I would uh, definitely suggest you guys to sign up. Um, so if you are thinking to get the certified and uh, we will go over to um, each of the component of the Kubernetes and concept and which is in whatever the curriculum uh, it's inside of the CK the exam, and we will do the practice. Um, sometimes is just signing up to Udemy courses or others is not enough uh, because you will get stuck in some part and you need to ask the questions. And um, sometimes also, and uh, those things is in taking time. Uh, but you know, we have like a really uh, compressed like a, the course. Uh, uh, timeline like in in one month so then you will study and practice and get ready and then the next month is when you um, register the, the the exam so you will be able to pass the and uh, this certification okay thank you so our program our course is going to start on february the 5th 
Uh, and we shared the links to uh, get one-on-one -on -one interviews with our career advisors. So you can check those as well. And we'd be happy to help you all uh, to our watchers. All right. Um, thank you again, Mustafa. Thank you for sharing all of your uh, experience and all, all of your advice. All right. What, were there any questions, Kia, or just we are um, out of time? Right now, right now, um, we're kind of out of time. Um, okay. We can wait a few more minutes uh, if we have any questions, and then we can end. Okay. So thank you all for watching this event. Uh, we'd see all of you again in our future tech talks, hopefully. Thank you. And Thanks. have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you, Mustafa, again. Okay. Bye-bye.